Hey everyone, it's Christine. Um, we are here with Q&A Tuesday, and I did not get any questions ahead of time as far as anything people wanted to go over. Um, I will, however, um, you know, if you have any questions halfway through the video, feel free to just chime in. Um, I will try and keep my, I will try and keep tabs on the comments just in case anybody um, has any. And I don't know how to, I can't see them on my phone and I don't know why and I don't know what I do different. So I just pop my laptop open while I'm live so that I can see that. So, um, okay. So because I had no questions, what I'm going to do is um, we had we had talked about it a few weeks ago and we were going to do some Tunisian tutorials. There were quite a few people in the group that wanted to learn how to do Tunisian. So last week we did the Tunisian Simple Stitch. We did a dishcloth for that. Hi, Brianna. And um, this week we are going to do the... I forgot. Tunisian pearl stitch, which is very similar to the knit pearl stitch, um, but it's for Tunisian. So I'm going to um, show you my mom moment. Um, I'm sorry. I put it, I told you I put it right in the entryway, honey. Oh, okay. Okay, sorry. <laughs> okay, where are you from, Brianna? Are you still here? It looks like my call might have dropped. I don't know why every time I go live in this group I have issues. Okay, hopefully I'm still live. Um, so I'm going to show you my mom moment for this week. And my sister is here, and I think I told her you're in Indiana. Hopefully the weather's nicer than here. It's rainy here. Um, my mom moment for the week, and so you can all laugh at me because I have a good sense of humor and it will not offend me at all. <laughs> um, I started to paint my nails, um, I don't know, Thursday or Friday, I think. And of course, you, you know, you have to do more than one coat. And so... I got a coat done and then I realized I really needed pictures of a pattern and my hand needed to be in the picture um, and I did not have time to do my nails so I finished one hand and so it was like oh, I'll just finish one hand and I'll um, I'll finish the other hand later and I never finished my hand <laughs> my hand both hands and so I had one hand done and one hand half done and that was um, I don't know like I said, Thursday or Friday, I think. And I just had to run out to the store um, before I did this video because we make our own bread and I can't find flour anywhere. There, it's still a major shortage around here. And so a couple of my daughters work at the grocery store and they were unloading the truck last night and they said, we got flour. You know, they're, they're limiting it to one to everybody. But so I decided I was gonna run down there this morning and get flour. And on the way home, I realized my nails are still terrible and I was gonna do a video today in this group. And so I wanna show you, this is life as a mom with the crazy life we have going on. So this is what I did last week. And as you can see, it still looks pretty good. I have one chipped or whatever here. This is the hand that I didn't finish. See, they're not even close to the same color. So as you watch me do this video, you can laugh that, um, yeah, my nail, I, I don't even know if it, shows you really well how bad or how different they are but that's my funny for today and I was gonna try and take the um I was gonna try and take them off when I got home and I decided it was more important so I'll flip my screen so that you can see what I'm doing we're gonna work on the Tunisian pearl stitch um and I will show you what it looks like and then we will get started and if I know Helen had a question about how to um, her corner was getting longer in one corner. So I'll show you when I flip the camera, but one of her corners, it's not uncommon for the bottom right hand corner to, to just slightly be longer or more pronounced than the rest of the pattern. And there is a solution for fixing that. So I will show that as well when I flip the camera. All right, give me one second. And hopefully that works and you can see what I'm doing. Okay, hopefully that is enough space for me and you can see what I'm doing. And see my, see now you can see how bad my nails are. Okay. <laughs> All right, so let's start a Tunisian pearl stitch dishcloth. So I'm just gonna start with a slip knot. 
normal slip knot. I like my end to be a little bit longer for weaving in. I just would rather have a little extra. Okay, and I'm going to make, so this is what it's gonna look like when you're done. This is the Tunisian pearl stitch. Um, this is the front side. The back side looks slightly different, but not, not completely different. But this is the front side. And I like it. If you if you find if you do it with a bigger hook, it actually pulls these stitches apart a little bit, um, and you get like a long piece here, and then you get the cross, you know, the horizontal bar there. I re I I actually like this stitch. Um, okay, so what I was talking about before is a lot of times with Tunisia, not so much with this stitch, but this one I did in acrylic and you can see a little bit. You can see if this goes straight across and then this bottom corner just comes down ever so slightly. So it has a like a, a natural curve to it. It's because these stitches on your, that's the one that stays on the hook all the time. They end up a little bit looser. So there, there's a solution for fixing that and I will show you as I go. So instead of making an entire dishcloth, um, which I could, but we would be here a while just because I'm not the fastest crocheter. I'm just gonna make a smaller, you know, I'll do maybe like eight or 10 inch, uh, eight or ten stitches across just so you can see um, what it's gonna look like and how to do it. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna chain, let's say 12, two, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, and that'll give you a good idea what it's gonna look like. Actually, yeah, I'll just stick with 12. Okay, so if you weren't here last week for Tunisian, the best way um, to start is to flip it over and work in these bottom loops. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna insert the hook and you're gonna pull up a loop in every single one of those those bottom loops or back ridge. Some patterns will call it the back ridge. Um, everybody calls it something slightly different, but it's just, it's that back bar that you wanna work into. We're gonna pull up a loop in all these. Okay, so when you get to the end, and the, so the, for the pattern for the dishcloth, if you want an eight inch dishcloth, um, you would chain 31. And if you want like a six and a quarter, which is really good for like kid size, or if you're looking for more of like um, a washcloth or something a tiny bit smaller, um, the, if you do um, 23 chain, I believe it was 23 chain will end up, I have the pattern written up, I believe um, that will end up about six and a quarter. Okay, so what you do is you don't do anything with, you skip your first one like you, so we have, sorry, we have 12 chains, you skip the first one, and then you pull up a loop in every single one across. And this is how you would start, un unless it's specified. So then to, so that's called a forward pass and you're gonna do a return pass to pull them all back off. So for a return pass, you yarn over and you pull through one. And it's, in essence, that's like the equivalent of like a chain one at the beginning of a row to move your hook up to the height of the next row. So you're gonna, you're gonna yarn over and chain uh, and pull through one and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two and you're gonna do that all the way across. So yarn over, pull through two. And that is really a normal return pass. Um, if a pattern does not specify how to do the return pass, this is normally what they're talking about. If they're not specifying and it should be something else, then I think it's wrong. <laughs> they should have done it. Um, most patterns will tell you at least the first return pass what it should be. Okay, so we have now we have our 12 stitches. So now, you know, this is open. You don't want this. And so these vertical bars are what we work into for Tunisian. And there's all different ways to work into those to make the stitches look different. So last week we did the, the Tunisian simple stitch and we went through the bar this way. 
we went just behind the vertical bar and then we yarned over and we pulled to, pulled it up. So this week we're going to do the same exact thing, but but before we do that, we're going to put the yarn in front of the hook. I don't know if you can So we're going to put the yarn in front of the hook instead of leaving it behind the hook. We're going to put it in front of the hook. And we're going to do the same exact thing. We're going to go behind that vertical bar and then you're going to take the yarn and you're going to then you're going to pull it in front of the vertical bar we just made. You're going to go behind the hook and you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay. So, and you're going to do that all the way across. So you're going to put the yarn in front of the, the hook. You're going to insert it behind the vertical bar and then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. You cannot yarn over front to back and pull up a loop. It will not look the same. You have to actually, you have to actually go in front, go in front of this vertical bar with the yarn, the working yarn, and then go behind the hook and yarn over and pull up a loop to get this stitch, okay? And you'll end up with all these horizontal bars going across. Okay, so you're gonna put the yarn in front of the hook. You're gonna insert it behind the vertical bar. And then you're gonna yarn over and pull up a loop. And you're gonna do that all the way across. And this is the Tunisian pearl stitch, which is the equivalent, visually, it's the equivalent of the, the knit pearl, the knit, the knitting version of the pearl stitch, not the knit pearl, but the knitting version of the pearl stitch. When it's done, it will have a similar visual look. Okay, so in always, you'll always have the same amount of stitches on the hook when you get to the end. So don't forget when we get to the end of this row, the first one we don't work into, we do the Tunisian pearl stitch all the way across. And then when you get to this last one, if you missed the video last week, you're going to, at the end, you have, let me find one that you can actually see it. Um, you have two bars, okay? So now if we're only working into that first one, on, on every other stitch, we're just working into this first one, we're separating it, right? So instead of doing that, we're going to work we're going to put both of them on the hook. We're going to work behind both of them and that will give it a finished edge so that you won't have to put a border on it if you don't want. Okay, so this one I actually, I don't know if you can see it on this one. I don't know why. I don't, that one did not come out. I don't, I didn't do it on this one. This is what the one I didn't do it to show you there's really no finished look to it okay whereas this one it has that finished it looks like like the top of a stitch right and this one it, this is what it's going to look like if you don't do that like there's no it's not very neat it's not a finished edge okay so once we get all the hooks all the loops on the hook we're going to work them off so you're going to yarn over and pull through one and then you're gonna yarn over and pull through two. And you're gonna do that all the way across. Oh, that's okay, Helen, if you're late. Um, I was almost late. I had to go to the store too. Um, and it was a little crazy. Um, but I found a store that had flour. And by the time I got there, um, they had three bags of flour left and they were limiting people to one. But at least I got one because we make our own bread here. And uh, we were out, so I needed to. Okay, so, and this is what this is going to look like, and I actually really like this stitch. I purposely used a lighter yarn so you could see. Um, so you get the vertical bar, and then across the horizon you get like a little knot, if you can see that. Okay, so Helen, you were the one that asked me, now that you're here, you were the one that asked me how you get that um, corner to keep, this isn't a really good one, but... I'm assuming you meant this right-hand corner, how it just kind of slopes down a little bit on the projects. This is my solution. Um, there, and Okay, so there's two ways to do it. One is to try and loosen up the entire 
width of the project. So this is loosening up on its own. So if you were to if you were to loosen up the rest of it, so like you could use a smaller hook on those first two, maybe three stitches, or you could le learn to loosen up your grip. But my solution is this. Okay, ready? This is my sneaky trick. I take this off my hook. I mean, off my loop. I take the loop off the hook. I stick a stitch marker in that loop. Okay, and I just leave it there and I pull it, you can pull it as tight as you want so that actually you should pull it tight. Um, not too tight because you don't want it. If you have a smaller stitch marker, what's going to happen if you pull it too tight, it's going to try and go through that, that one underneath it, but just leave it there. Okay. And then you're going to start in the first stitch like this stitch isn't here. So I'm working a um, Tunisian pearl stitch. And so if you miss the beginning, um, this yarn, the working yarn goes in front of the hook and you put the, the hook behind that vertical bar we were working into last week. And then you're going to yarn over and pull up a loop. And you're, you're just going to skip this and act like it's not there until you get to the end of the return pass. So you're going to put the yarn in front of your hook, insert it behind the vertical bar, yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay. And we're going to do that all the way across. I did, I did a little bit slower on the, on the first row. So I'm going to go a little bit quicker here for time's sake. So I don't take up too much time. Okay. So you're going to work this all the way across. Okay. And then we have one more. And then don't forget when you get to that last one, you're going to work behind both of those, um, both of those. So that's the end. So you're going to work behind both. So you get the finished edge, yarn over and pull up a loop. Okay. Now we have all 12 on here. Okay. So we're going to yarn over, pull through one, and then yarn over, pull through two. And we're gonna do that all the way to the end. And then I will show you what to do with that stitch marker. Okay, so I'm back, I'm down to this last stitch. And then I have this that's still on the hook. I mean on the marker. I'm going to take this off. I'm going to take the stitch marker off. I'm going to put the hook through the loop that was where the stitch marker is. And then I'm going to put this back on the last one back on. And then I'm going to yarn over and pull through both. And what that does is that makes this one a lot tighter. Can you see the difference? These two are probably almost twice the length of this one. Um, so you can do that every row if you tend to think yours is getting huge um you can you can take this off and put the stitch marker there every single row i tend to think it gets i don't know i just don't want to do it every row so i've i kind of do it every other row or i i try and do it at the, those first like maybe five rows where it seems like those are the plate that's the place where it loosens up the most um, and then once I feel like it's getting even, I'll stop doing it and I'll see if, um, if I can prevent it from doing it, just keep going without doing that. And if it, if it looks like it's starting to grow again, you can always just start doing it again. Um, just keep an eye on it. Or like I said, just do it every other row or every third row just to keep it from, from growing. All right. I'm going to do one more row of this just to give it a little bit of body and then we can work it off and we can do the bind off row. Okay. If you missed the beginning of the video, you are free to laugh at my nails. I decided to be a real mom and not try and 
cover up my reality life of, yes, one hand being done. Okay, we get to the end. Yarn over, uh, I mean, insert through both. And then you don't need to yarn, you don't need to put the yarn in front of it for this one. So just do this one normal. You can insert it through both, yarn over, pull up a loop. Okay. So I end up doing normal single crochet around the dishcloth because of that right edge. Yeah, so try it this way. Try it and see. So you can see on this. See how these one, these bottom ones that I did not do that with are so much bigger? And then this is the one I just did. So you can see, you can see the difference even, here I'll put it on the blue background so you can see. You can see the difference just even in doing it once. Whereas these two are, are a lot bigger, a lot wider. It's, it's just the hook stretches it. So people that tend to do Tunisian looser, these will all be looser so it'll kind of match this. Whereas I tend to be a very tight crocheter and I, as much as I try to loosen up this side, when I try, like this one, I tried really hard and it's only slightly noticeable. It's not, you can see it's, it's not terrible. Um, as far as that corner, it could be better. Um, but it doesn't have that huge drop. It's just a slight drop. So um, yeah, it, that's my best tip is to use that stitch marker. It works every time. It takes, you know, a couple seconds longer to put it on at the beginning and take it off at the end. But it'll, if you're looking for perfection, it will come out a lot nicer in the end. Okay, so let's work this off and then we'll do the bind off um, just as a refresher. So it was yarn over, pull through one and then yarn over, pull through two all the way across. Okay, so now we're back at the end. Okay, so now um, if you're new to Tunisian, this is open, we don't wanna leave this this way so we have to Tunisian calls it a bind off which is a knit term um, but we have to bind it off and close up these gaps and so the bind off row is always one stitch at a time it's it's more like a regular crochet it's not a regular crochet stitch it's not you don't pull them all up at the same time so um, we can keep with the same stitch if you wanted so you can um, put you can put the yarn in front and you can insert it into the hook, into the behind the vertical bar, yarn over, and then you're gonna actually just make it a slip stitch. And so it'll give it that, here, I'm gonna do a couple of them just so you can see the pattern of it. So you're gonna put the yarn in front of the hook, you're gonna insert it behind the vertical bar, and then you're gonna go behind the hook and slip stitch. Now when I slip stitch, I tend to especially for a bind off row, I tend to pull this up to the working height. Otherwise, um, if you do this slip stitch row too tight, your top row will curl over and I don't want that. So I pull it up to the height and then I just pull it through that second loop just so that it has a, a little bit less of a chance of doing that curling at the top. Um, all right, let me do one or two more so you can see what the bind off row is gonna look like. Okay, my, sorry, my yarn is not cooperating. Okay, so yarn over, slip stitch. Yarn over, slip stitch. Okay, and so you can see what I have so far. Um, it'll match the rest of the stitches but you'll get the finished, you'll get the finished edge at the top. So this, this will match. If you did a regular slip stitch, it just went behind the vertical bar without putting that yarn in front of the hook first, it would look like a Tunisian stitch, a uh, simple stitch. It wouldn't look like the pearl stitch. 
Okay. And what we were doing is, so you always have four sides. So like this one's loose because I wanted to show you how to fix that, but it looks like a finished edge. And then by working into that back ridge, the bottom looks like a finished edge. And then by working through both both loops on the, both um, wraps from the loop on the side, you get a finished edge on this side too. So let me finish this off and you can see that you will end up with four complete finished edge sides. You can still do a single crochet around the whole thing if you wanted to. Um, I tend to like to be able to save steps if I can and not do anything I don't have to do, especially if it's just for me or, you know, if it was a pattern I was writing, you know, like an in-depth pattern, I might put a border on it. If, or if it was a blanket, I'd put a border on it. Um, but just for a dishcloth, I don't really know if you need one. Okay, so we have a couple more here. Ah, can't see it, sorry. All right, and that last one, you're gonna work behind both, behind both of those. And you're gonna just slip stitch on that one too. And then you can fasten off and you're done. And then we have, I know this is not the size of a dishcloth, but so if you wanted to do a dishcloth, you would do, if you're using worsted weight um, for the small dishcloth, you would chain 23 and I'm gonna pull that up and verify that, but I'm like pretty sure that that's what I did for a stitch count. The pattern will be posted tomorrow as soon as I have the pictures. Um, but it, if you went to the Tunisian Simple Stitch from last week, I used the same stitch counts. Um, they ended up being exactly the same measurements and everything, so the stitch count stayed the same. So you can use that for this until the pattern's posted tomorrow. Um, let me double check. Yeah, so for worsted weight, it's chain 25 for the six and a quarter inch dishcloth and chain 31 for the eight inch dishcloth. And then if you're using DK, or, which is a number three weight, um, for a small six and a quarter inch dishcloth, chain 23, and then for the larger eight inch dishcloth, chain 33, okay? And if you have any questions, um, let me know. I don't see any. I'm trying to... Yeah, Helen, I think that'll solve your problem. Try that and let me know. And if it doesn't, uh, maybe I can come up with another solution. That one seems to be the one that has worked the best for me over the years. Um, if I can't get that corner, if I can't get this corner, you know, like a 90 degree angle, I'll, I'll do that. Um, hi Shiloh. Shiloh's one of my greatest friends. I actually met Shiloh um, on my business page and we live like an hour from each other and our kids are friends and she's one of my biggest fans. Okay. Um, she's also one of my best friends. <laughs> All right. If nobody has any questions, I am going to sign off here. Um, and we will do this again next week. I will, if you have any, this is normally a Q and A on Tuesdays and I've been doing, if there's no questions, then we've been doing some Tunisian tutorials. So I will come up with another one for next week. If, um, if nobody has any questions that need, um, you know, attention as far as just verbally going through something or a tutorial or whatever. I hope everybody is staying safe and healthy, and I will talk to you Friday is Sip and Stitch at 12. Okay, have a good day.